welcome to another video. The purpose of this integral is to get you to think about the things that are possible and the alternative ways of taking an integral. So I look at this and I know that u substitution is out of the, the question because there is nothing on top. So whatever, if I make this my u and I get a derivative, I can't, this, this is just one. The derivative of the bottom is not one. So I know u substitution doesn't work, um, or at least I don't see it. But one thing I want you to observe is that you could do partial fraction decomposition or integration by parts. You have to always project into the immediate future to see what's going to happen if you use any of those strategies. Well, I don't see them helping me either. But a closer look at this polynomial tells you that the degree of the first term is double the degree of the second term, and there's a constant at the end. Start thinking of a perfect square. And if it's not a perfect square, you may need to complete the squares. So, what should you do? Well, I will try to factor this and see what comes out. Is it factorable? Well, we have to investigate. Let's get into the video. Before we go on, don't forget to like the video, share the video, comment under the video, and be subscribed if you're not. So if I take x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1, I'm going to write it here, x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. I know, I know it's factorable. Okay, I wrote the question. This is going to be x to the fourth plus x squared plus x squared plus 1. This is how I factor and this is how I teach factoring, especially of a quadratic or of a trinomial that is factorable. See, I have split this into two. What is common to these two? It's x squared. So here I have x squared plus 1. I'm done. If I go here, what's common to these two? There's nothing. So I just write x squared plus 1. They only have one in common. So I have x squared plus 1 here, x squared plus 1 here. It means I can factor x squared plus 1 out. And what is left is x squared plus 1 here. So it looks like this is actually a perfect square. So what I have under here, this integral, can be written as the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 squared. Now, you don't need to show all of this. I'm just showing you that if you're not sure whether it's factorable, you can run through a process like this and or you can assume that this is x squared is y so you can say let x squared be y so this is now y squared plus 2y plus 1. It will clearly show where you say y equals x squared. You can just make this assumption and if you make this assumption you can have something like this and it's going to help you. Okay so now this is what we have. If this was the original integral, actually this was the integral I was planning to write, but I decided to make it this way so I can show you that you should look out for factoring. Now, if this was the question you were given to integrate, how would you integrate this? U substitution still does not help because the derivative of x squared plus 1 still contains x and there is no x up here, so we got to give up on that one. Okay. Um, it doesn't look like there's anything we could do, but what if we do a trig substitution? Or can we do partial fraction decomposition? What exactly is the way out of this, the fastest way out? There, there are many ways, but... I say, what trig identity has something squared plus one? Well, it is tangent. So we're going to assume that x is equal to tangent of theta, and then we'll see what happens. This is going to work out. Let's see. So we say, let x be equal to tan theta, because we know that tan squared theta plus 1 is going to be secant squared theta, right? So what is dx? Well, dx is going to be equal to secant squared theta d theta. Mm. So I can replace dx with secant squared theta d theta, so it means this integral, let's put this in a box here. 
So it means this integral can be written as the integral of 1 over, this is tan squared theta, because this is tan theta, so tan squared theta plus 1 multiplied by, oh, this is all squared, multiplied by secant squared theta d theta. Let's clean this up. So now we can easily simplify this expression because I know that this is gonna be equal to the integral of secant squared theta d theta divided by one over, now what is tan squared theta plus one? It's secant squared theta, we know that. It's gonna be secant squared theta squared. So you see where integration becomes tough is if you don't recognize this identity and as, an int, um, as a calculus student, you have to know these identities from your trig. Okay, so now we're gonna cancel. You got two of it here, you got one on top. So this easily is the integral of one over secant squared theta d theta. This makes your life a lot easier because we know what secant squared theta is. What is it? It is one over cosine theta. So the reciprocal of secant squared theta is um, what? This is the integral of, yeah, cosine squared theta d theta. How do we integrate this? There's something else you have to know. You have to write this, um, convert it, not from cosine squared. You have to go back to that identity. Um, let me just write that identity one more time because this might be the first time you're watching a video that has this kind of integration. So what you do is you say that cosine two theta is the same thing as two cosine squared theta minus one. So we're just going to isolate cosine squared theta and get, because we can't integrate this, it has to be linear, at least nothing squared. So if we move this here, we're gonna have cosine two theta plus one, but on the right hand side, we have two cosine squared theta, and then we're gonna divide both sides by two, so we take one half of this, so this can be written, this expression will be written as, so we'll write it as one half of cosine two theta plus one d theta, we can pull out the one half. So I'm just gonna write this out and that's gonna be one half of cosine two theta plus one d theta. Well, that's gonna be the integral of cosine two theta is one half of sine two theta. So this is one over two times one half of sine two theta plus what is the integral of this is just theta. Okay, at this point we have obtained our answer, but we cannot leave it in terms of theta and theta, we have to go back to x. So when did we switch from x to theta? That's the next place you go to. It was here, we said x equals tan theta, so we have to go back and make a triangle so we can recover our x. So if x equals tan theta, so we're saying that tan theta is equal to x. Uh, that means if we have a right triangle and this angle is theta, the tangent of this angle is opposite over adjacent, that's x over one. This must be the square root of x squared plus one squared. We can say this is equal to, let's clean this up. This is one fourth of sine two theta, so this is sine two theta over four, one half of theta, theta over two plus C. So what is sine two theta? Well, we know that sine two theta is two sine theta cos theta, right? Okay, we have to keep going. This is gonna be equal to two sine theta cos theta well, what is sine theta from this triangle? One over four of two times sine theta, which is x over square root of x squared plus one. That is two sine theta. Cosine theta is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is one over 
square root of x squared plus 1, looking nice. That's 2 sine theta cos theta, 1 over 4, and then we're going to say plus theta over 2. What is theta over 2? Theta is going to be the arctangent of x plus arctan x. Okay, plus c. But this looks like a mess. So what can we do? Let's multiply. Well, I know this two is going to take out one of these two, so this is going to become one half. Watch me. So one fourth of two is going to be one half. So I'm going to write one half here, one over two. And I know if I multiply x by one, I'm going to get x on top. If I multiply this by this, the square root sign will disappear, so I am left with x over x squared plus 1. Let's go! So this is going to be replaced by x over x squared plus 1, and you have 1 half right here. And this is the integral, ladies and gentlemen. Never stop learning. For those who stop learning, have stopped living. Bye-bye.